Alright, to mod Skyrim, first things first, run Skyrim at least one time in order to run initial setup. Then, you want to go to Nexus Mods, probably make an account, click on the Mods tab, and click on the right here, Get Vortex. Download and install that, and once you've done that, go ahead and boot up Vortex. I would sign in to Vortex once you have it up. Now on the left here, you'll see Games, click that. Now you want to look for a Skyrim Special Edition in the Unmanaged category, or use the search bar to search for it. Once you find it, if you hover over it, you'll see you get a little Manage button. Click the Manage button, and it adds it to Managed Games. Now if you have more than one game managed, you can click in the top left here where the icon is, click that, and then you can choose from the games that you have managed and switch between them. Now optionally, you can click on Settings over here on the left, and on the Mods tab, you can change where the mods actually get installed. Along with the Downloads tab, you can change where the downloads go, if you wish. Or you can just leave them where they are. Now that you've done that, there's going to be a few mods you're going to need to download, almost definitely, in order to make a lot of other mods work. First one is Skyrim Script Extender. I have Skyrim Special Edition, so I want this one. Just simply click on the little archive here to download that. Once you've downloaded that, you should have a little file right here that looks just like this. Now on back on Vortex, click on the Mods tab. You'll see a little Drop Files bit right here. Now you want to click and drag that file into here. So to simply click on that and drag it, go to Vortex, and then drop it into here. That's the only one you're going to have to add manually. The rest you can just download straight to Vortex. The next one is going to be Four's New Idols in Skyrim Special Edition. Now this one has a few files to pick from. It's got five, so I'm going to click on that. Scroll down. You can choose whichever one's applicable to you. However, I just want the main one. So I'm going to click Mod Manager Download. It'll download it straight to Vortex. Next, I'll do Body Slide. Now this one only has one file, so I'm just going to click Download to Vortex, straight to Vortex. Now for Sky UI. Again, it's one file. You can just click the Vortex download button. Then there's race menu. This one again has three files. Scroll down. Choose whichever one's applicable to you. I just need the main one. Mod manager download to download straight into Vortex. Now for unofficial Skyrim special edition patch. It's just simply one file. Download straight into Vortex. Those are the main mods you'll probably need to run a lot of other mods. Now optionally, you may download a body replacer mod that has a few more things to it. So I'll do that now. Now there's a few to pick from, I prefer Caliente's Beautiful Bodies Enhancer. This again has six files, pick whichever one's applicable to you, I just want the main one. Mod Manager Download, straight into Vortex. Now that we have that, if you want the body to actually have physics though, there's going to be a few more things you're going to need to download. First one being XP32 Maximum Skeleton Special Extended. That one has two files, scroll down to see those, choose whichever one's applicable to you. Mod Manager Download for the main file, straight into Vortex for me. And lastly, CBP Physics. Again, two files, pick whichever one you want, I want the main one, mod manager download straight into Vortex. And finally, we're done downloading what I would call the assets to make a lot of other mods work. Now you can go about downloading any other mods that you want, but be absolutely sure to look at the requirements to see if it requires another mod. Now back on Vortex, I have all my mods downloaded, so I'm going to click on my top mod right here, and then scroll all the way to the bottom, and then shift click on the bottom one, and that'll give me install right here at the bottom. Them, click that and this may take a while I have a lot of mods and some mods do have option menus that pop up where you can choose what you want just choose whatever works for you or whatever options you want in those mods for example this one popped up asking if I want to have all-in-one or separate installs for each of the characters individually just choose whatever options you want and work for you okay once all those mods are finally installed you should get a notification right here it'll say mods installed multiple and you can just click enable or you can I'm going to click on the bottom one, scroll to the top, shift click the top one, and just click enable. Either way will work. Now you're probably going to see a mess of notifications. Some of them enable uh, plugins, you can just click enable all on those. And for there are unresolved file conflicts, you can click more, or you can click on manage rules right here. And it wants to know what mods should be loaded after or before. I always just click whatever it says is suggested. Just do that for each of them. Click save, and it'll want to deploy again. In. Go ahead and do that. If you don't get that notification up here, then you can just simply click deploy mods. It's the same thing. And always be sure to deploy your mods whenever you mess with them. I like to double check that all my mods are now enabled. Same thing with my plugins. All right, now back on dashboard. You'll see that you have new idols and the Skyrim script extender. Now this won't normally be here for you. You'll have to add this manually for the body slide. To do that, you would click add tool, new. 
Now click this little folder icon right here on target and you'll want to navigate all the way down to where the actual mod is installed. So it'll be somewhere in here. If I click on this, it'll give you the full length. I install stuff in a custom location called eInstalls. Normally this would probably say something like program files 86, but just work your way down through all this until eventually you get to the body slide folder and you want to choose body slide x64.exe. Click that, click open, and it should fill out the rest of it for you, including an icon. If you can rename this if you want, I usually get rid of the x64 and just leave it at body slide, but you can do what you want and then just click save. It'll add it straight to here. Now, if you did one of the body Body replacer mods, go ahead and just click the little play button on it. It'll auto detect where your game is and what games you have that can use this. So Skyrim Special Edition, I'm just going to click choose game. Now for outfit slash body, you want to click on this and then for whatever body type you have, you want to choose the special or physics version of it. For this example, I'm going to scroll down to the never nude physics. And if you want, you can click on the preview button here. And then here you can adjust all the sliders and change how they look. You can click and drag and you can right click to rotate and you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So I'm going to X that off. Now, once you get the body you want, you can click batch build and it'll default everything on. That's what you want. Click build. And then you want to choose whatever one you chose on the top here. So never nude physics. And then for everything else, you want to choose special or physics. It should default to the top option for each of these. So sometimes it'll automatically be that way for you. Physics on top. If not, just choose the bottom one for special or physics and just scroll through this entire list and just choose the physics version or the special version for each of these. Now that I'm at the bottom and I've chosen physics or special for each of these, I'm just going to click OK. It'll run through each of them. Done. Now you can X off body slide. Next, now you want new idols. Click play on that. Now tick whichever ones of these you need. Make sure you pay close attention to what mods require what. It even says available patches don't tick if unknown do not do that so me specifically i need the two top ones ticked once you choose which ones you need just click update behaviors it'll take a minute to run through all the animations it's making it won't look like it's doing anything but you just need to give it time all right it's done you'll know it's done when it tells you how many animations it made for how many mods now you can just click exit now this confirmation menu is going to pop up if you just simply click cancel it will not have this confirmation pop up anymore so if you want this to stop happening just click cancel all right so you're basically good to go on on mods now but in order to use them you need to run through the script extender so you can one boot up vortex and click the play button on the script extender if you want i prefer to run the game through steam so one way you can do that is in steam just simply at the bottom left here add a game click that add a non-steam game now you're going to want to click browse you want to find your way all the way down to where your game is actually physically installed and you'll see that there is skse64 loader.exe you want to choose that click open, click add selected programs, and that'll add it to Steam. See, it's right here in my game library. However, that's not perfect. If I run it like this, I won't be able to use the Steam overlay using shift tab because it's qualifying as a non-Steam game, so you can't use the Steam overlay. So if I boot the game up through here, now if I use shift tab, you'll notice that my overlay does not work. So I want that to work though. So another way to make this work, and this is what I prefer to do, is in your Steam install folder for Skyrim, where you saw the skse 64 loadersexe What I'm going to do is actually make a copy of that. I'm going to right click, copy, and then just paste. Now this is the launcher that the game uses. If you run Skyrim through Steam, when you tell it to play, what it does is it actually launches Skyrim SE Launcher, which is, if I boot this up, the options menu to play the game. I'm just going to click exit. So I'm actually going to rename this. That way it no longer is recognized by Steam. I'm going to copy this name, and on the copy that we made, I'm going to rename it what that was originally. So now whenever you boot up through Steam, it's going to look for a file with this name. So it'll actually run this, which then runs Skyrim Special Edition. So now when I boot up Skyrim through Steam, I'll be able to use the overlay. So if I go to Steam, click on Skyrim and click play, it'll skip the Skyrim launcher. Instead, just boot straight into the game using the script extender. Now if I shift tab, my overlay will now work. And as a side note, if you go down to mods for the in-game mods, you can actually mix and match these with mods you download from Nexus. These ones will show up in the plugins category on Vortex. I would not mess with the load order at all with this though. Don't mess around with that. Let Vortex do that for you. So if I go to new game, start new game. Okay, so a couple notifications and I have an alternate start installed. So I spawn somewhere else. I'm just gonna skip 
all this. Now you'll see in the top left, I have a lot of the mods being activated now that it's uh, running. I'm just gonna press start, go to system, and then mod configuration. This is where you can actually modify your mods in game if you wanna fine tune them a bit. And now I think we've covered just about everything you need to have covered in order to use mods in Skyrim.